okay so let us start the today session uh, in the last session initially we have started with the uh, the types of systems okay intensive properties extensive properties what is heat what is work okay so th all those basic things we have started okay now in this lecture okay we'll just move ahead in the same module okay uh, so now i will start sharing the screen okay uh, so see in the last lecture okay we have derived the expression for work done okay and work done was given by integration of pdb work done was given by integration of pdb work done during any process it is given by integration of pressure into dv okay uh, so from that uh, expression okay we understood that if you plot any diagram on the pv scale okay the area enclosed below that diagram will give you the magnitude of work done okay so if you plot any process on a pv diagram and if you calculate area below that curve so area below that process basically will give you the value of work done during that process okay uh, so now let us understand okay what do you mean by point function and what is path function okay let, let us try to understand what is point function and what is path function okay so let us see here okay uh, so let us let us consider point number a point number 1 okay and this is the initial state okay the point number 1 is a initial state where i have the pressure p1 and volume v1 okay at point number 1 pressure is p1 and volume is v1 now from i from point number 1 i need to reach to point number 2 where pressure is p2 and volume is v2 okay so uh, point number 1 is basically the initial state so from point number 1 we i need to move to the final state that is that is state number 2 right now see you can move from point number 1 to point number 2 okay either through path a okay you can move like this you can move through path a okay alternatively you can move through path b okay that is in straight forward you can move similarly you can move through path c okay so you can observe there are multiple ways okay to reach it to point number 2 okay so there there are multiple ways okay from which we can we, from which we can move from a state number 1 to state number 2 right so see so in every case what you can observe the path is different okay so when we see the path 1a okay, we see the path 1a2 okay and if we need to calculate what is the work done during 1a2 if you need to calculate what is the work done during 1a2 okay we need to calculate area below that okay we need to calculate the area below that okay so area below that 1a2 area below that 1a2 will give you the value of work done during 1 to 2 okay so area below the 1a2 it will give you the value of work done during 1a2 okay is that okay all of you let me know is that okay lo ki baat is that okay aisa ka order aaj bhi nahi hai yeah is that okay with this one yes sir yeah see similarly similarly when you move through 1 b2 when you move through 1 b2 okay and if you need to calculate area uh, calculate the work done during 1 b2 okay if you need to calculate the work done during 1 b2 how you will calculate you need to calculate area below 1 b2 area below 1 b2 okay similarly when you move through 1 c2 and if you need to calculate work done during 1 c2 you need to calculate area below the 1 c2 okay so this is the area which is uh, below the 1 c2 okay so now now you you might have observed okay when when we move from 1 c2 area is more as compared to the 1 b2 okay and is more as compared to 1 a2 okay so in every case we are having different area okay that means we have different value of work done okay that means we are we are having different value of work done see i am calling specifically as a work done because 
when you see the direction of this arrow it is going downward okay so when the arrow is going downward okay it is understood that it's a expansion okay and whenever there is expansion work gets produced okay that that's why i'm calling as work done work done i'm not calling as work consumed okay why i'm calling this as work done because arrow is going downward downward that means it's a expansion okay so see work done during 1c2 it is and b2 it is greater as compared to the work done during 1a2 okay so in every case we are getting different value of work done okay that means work done will depends upon work done will depends upon path it will depends upon path okay is, is that okay all of you is that okay that's how work done will depends upon path that's why work work or heat they are called as path functions i repeat work done okay they are called as path functions is that okay see work done or heat transferred they are called as path functions okay is, is, is that clear yes sir why work, why work done it is called as path function because it will depends upon path that is followed okay during during the process that's why it is called as path function okay now see in the ppt it is mentioned as point function okay i need to come to that point why it is called as point function okay so have you understood what is path function let me know have you understood what is path yes, function sir. is that clear or or is there any, any doubt or difficulty still yet sir can yes. you explain it again yeah i i will just go go to that वर्ड ओके so you observe that work done during 1a2 it is different as compared to the work done during 1b2 is different as as compared to the work done during 1c2 so work done is different okay that's why the properties like work work they are called as path functions they are called as path function because work will depends upon path work will depends upon path so when you move from 1a2 work done is different 1b2 work done is, done is different 1c2 work done is different that's why properties like like work heat okay they are called as path functions okay so there are only two properties one is heat and second is work okay they are called as path functions because they will depends upon path okay now now let us come to this point what is called as point function let let us come to the point what is called as a point function right now see when i move to point from point number 1 to point number 2 try to understand when i move from point number 1 to point number 2 okay through path a or through path b or through path c okay i will be reaching to the same point try to understand i repeat when i will move from point number 1 okay either through path a or through path b or through path c i will be reaching to the same point okay so so I, i will get same value of pressure i will get same value of volume i will get same value of temperature okay so whether it's a path a or path b or path c i need to reach it to the same point that's why the property is like pressure volume temperature okay enthalpy entropy internal energy all they are called as point functions because these properties does not depend upon path they only simply depends upon the point or state okay so see when you start moving from point number 1 okay and irrespective of path whether you go through a or b or c okay you will be reaching to the same point that is point number 2 okay where pressure is p2 and volume is v2 okay so this p2 this volume v2 it will not depend upon 
whether you are moved through path A or through path B or through path C, right? So this pressure will remain same at point number two, and that is P two and V two. It will not depends upon whether it is a path A or path B or path C. That's why the properties like pressure, volume, temperature, enthalpy, entropy, right? Internal energy. They are called as point functions. They are called as point function. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay? All of you, is that okay? Let me yes, know. Sir. Okay. So see, you only understand. There are only two properties. There are only two properties which are path functions, and those properties are work and heat. See now. Now you understand understand why the work is a path function. Because what is the formula for work done? It is integration P D V. Formula for work done is integration P D V. So it indicates that when you plot any process on a P V diagram, when you plot any process on a P V diagram, area below that process will give you the value of work done. Similar case is going to happen with the heat transfer. Okay, because formula for heat transfer is integration T D S. formula for heat transfer is integration tds so in the similar manner if you plot any process on a ts diagram ts okay ts it's called as temperature and entropy diagram okay so if you plot any process on a ts diagram area below that process will give you the value of heat transfer i repeat if you plot it on a pv if you plot it on a pv it will give you the work done if you plot it on a ts If you plot it on a TS, it will give you the value of heat transfer. Okay, so for PV, it's work transfer. For TS, it's a heat transfer. And both, both work and heat, they are path functions because they will depends upon path. Okay, which you have followed while moving from initial state to final state, right? But when you when you compare this, okay, with the properties like pressure, volume, temperature, enthalpy, entropy, specific volume, okay. all those properties they are called as point functions why they are called as point functions because they will not depend upon path see i repeat i need to move when i start moving from point number 1 okay either through path a or through path b or through path c i will reach it to the same point that is point number 2 where pressure is p2 and volume is v2 okay so that's why the properties like pressure volume temperature enthalpy entropy Okay, internal energy. Okay, they are called as point functions. Okay, so this is the difference between uh, what is what is called as path and what is called as point. So path functions depends upon path. Okay, and heat and work they are path functions. While point point functions will only depends upon the points. Okay, so point is nothing but a state. So point function will only depends upon the point or state, and all the thermodynamic properties. I repeat. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is the point function is very slow or a path function is slow? You can you repeat? Can you repeat the question? The process yeah. in point function is slow or the process in point in point function is slow? I still, I still didn't get your question. Can Can you be too slow? <laughs> the process which is occurring in point function is very slow, na? No? Then compared to a path function? No, 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 no. See. Whether the process is slow or whether the process is fast, it is no way related to the point function. I repeat. See, I need to move from state number one, okay? And let's say, okay, I I I opted the path A, okay. In first case, I opted the path A, so I reached to point number two, where pressure is P two and volume is V two. Secondly, I opted the path B, still I am reaching the same point. thirdly i opted the point c still i'm reaching the same point that means the okay the, the the when you see the pressure and volume whether it's a path a or path b or path c i'm reaching it to the same point okay where the pressure is p2 and volume is v2 that's why the properties like pressure volume temperature they are called as point functions because they will not depend upon path whether it's a a or b or c is that okay Okay, okay. Is that okay? Okay. Now, 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 let us try to understand. Okay, let us see this process. Okay, I am plotting the same process on a PV diagram. Okay, uh, so let us see this process. Okay, this is the initial point. Initial state is one. 
okay from initial state 1 i need to reach it to final state 2 okay this is the initial state 1 i need to reach it to final state 2 so i will follow the path a so i will follow the path a okay now now i will follow the path a now i need to return back to the initial state 1 so what i will do i will now follow the path b so see overall i will move from point number 1 to point number 2 through path a and i will return back from point number 2 to point number 1 through path b okay so when i move from 1 to 2 again back from 2 to 1 it's completes a cycle okay so when when see when when your in final state is same as initial state okay that is basically known as cycle okay so from 1 i have started and i, I will be returning into again uh, this state number 1 so that is called as cycle right so see if i ask you okay what what, what is the change in uh, let's say pressure how will calculate what is change in pressure so change in pressure change in pressure during this cycle 1 a 2 i repeat i repeat this cycle 1 a 2 b 1 okay 1 a 2 b 1 is a cycle right you can see this one 1 a 2 b 1 this completes a cycle okay but this cycle it consists of two processes and which are those processes the processes include 1 a 2 and 2 b 1 right the cycle 1 a 2 b 1 it comprises of two processes and those two processes are 1 a 2 and 2 b 1 okay so if i ask you what is the change change in the pressure during cycle okay you need to add you need to add change in pressure during 1a2 plus change in pressure during 2b1 right if i ask you to calculate either change in pressure or change in volume or change in temperature okay during the cycle so cycle comprises of two processes okay so you need to calculate separately the change in pressure or volume or temperature for every cycle and, uh, sorry every process and then we need to add okay so change in pressure during this cycle is given by change in pressure during 1a2 plus change in pressure during 2b1 okay now see what is what is the change in pressure during 1a2 so during 1a2 okay initial pressure was p1 final pressure was p2 so change in pressure was p2 minus p1 right final state minus initial state i repeat during 1a2 okay the initial pressure was p1 final pressure was p2 so change in pressure was p2 minus p1 next what is the change in pressure during 2b1 change in pressure during 2b1 is okay final pressure that is p1 minus initial pressure that is p2 so that is written as p1 minus p2 is that okay or not let me know is that okay yes sir yes, sir okay now see when you when you add these two okay when you add this okay change what you will get you will get value equal to 0 you will get value equal to 0 okay so see during 1a2 the pressure got decrease from p1 to p2 during 1a2 pressure got decrease from p1 to p2 but during 2b1 during 2b1 pressure again got increase from p2 to p1 see it was initially increase decrease from p1 to p2 now it got increased from p2 to p1 so what is change it's zero see no need to do this thing also right you can here you can change it or you can check it here from 1 to 2 it is decrease again from 2 to 1 it is increase okay so there is no change in pressure similar thing you can you can check it with the volume initial volume was v1 okay v1 got increased to v2 you can check v1 got increased to v2 again v2 got decreased to v1 see during 1 to 2 volume got increased from v1 to v2 and from 2 to 1 volume got decreased from v2 to v1 back so what is change in volume now it's again zero so whether you take change in pressure or change in volume okay for a cycle is zero okay so in general if if you ask me okay so i will say that 
see cyclic integral of change in volume change in pressure or change in temperature is zero what does it indicates see this integration integration indicates you need to consider all the processes i repeat this integration indicates you need to consider all the processes this circle indicates it's a cycle right so you need to take cyclic integral of change in volume is equal to zero okay what 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 i'm asking is cyclic see circle indicates cyclic this integration indicates integral okay so cyclic integral of whether it's a volume or whether it's a pressure or whether it's a temperature it is equal to zero is that okay so same thing th same thing is applicable whether it's a pressure whether it's a volume whether it's a temperature enthalpy entropy internal energy Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so let us start. Okay. So this is all about this is all about what a uh, point function. These are called as what is point function, path function. Only two point functions, heat and work. Okay. And all the thermodynamic properties they are path functions. And which are thermodynamic properties? Pressure, volume, temperature. Okay, so all these are thermodynamic properties. So is, is is that clear with this one? Yes, is that clear? Yes, is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so see, uh, all all this what you can see on the screen. Okay, this or I I always used to draw the diagram. i used to write down that on a paper okay uh, but reason is now due to time constraint okay i'm just uh, explaining this thing okay this is some more theoretical part okay by uh, by by just describing you okay when we will start with the numerical and derivations actually we will derive it okay so now let us move to the next point okay uh, now now see this point okay what is called as thermodynamic equilibrium okay so see thermodynamic thermodynamic okay so you see you can say that one body it is in thermodynamic equilibrium with another body i repeat you can say that one body it is in thermodynamic equilibrium with another body only and only when it is in mechanical equilibrium it is in thermal equilibrium and it is in chemical equilibrium with another body okay so if one body if one body it is in mechanical thermal and chemical equilibrium with another body then only you can say that that body is in thermodynamic equilibrium with another body okay so if if body if body is need to satisfy the thermodynamic equilibrium it has to satisfy mechanical thermal and chemical equilibrium okay now now let us go to the point of mechanical equilibrium okay what is mechanical equilibrium see as the name indicates mechanical okay so it, it is somewhat related with the force and moments okay so see basic idea is for every action there will be equal and opposite reaction okay so that means what that system should be balanced okay the system should be balanced in simple absence of any unbalanced force okay there should be the absence of any unbalanced force that means the same system should be balanced okay let us let us take the simple example let's say a 20 kilo newton it is applied uh, applied to this uh, simply supported beam okay this is a simply supported beam uh, to which the 20 kilo newton is applied right so see if the 20 kilo newton is applied obviously okay the reactions will be generated at the supported ends okay and those reactions will depends upon the distance at which uh, the the that 20 kilo newton is applied okay uh, so This twenty kilonewton will be balanced either as a seven and thirteen kg, seven seven and thirteen kilonewton, or it might be balanced as ten and ten, 
it might be balanced as 5 and uh, 15 right so ultimately okay this 20 kN which is going downward it will be balanced by 20 kN which is going upward okay so that is that is the simple example okay how you can achieve the mechanical equilibrium okay that means the system should be balanced mechanically balanced okay so this is all about mechanical equilibrium now now let us let us go to the thermal equilibrium see name indicates thermal thermal so it is related with the temperature okay so see if temperature at any point within the system is same then the body is said to be in thermal equilibrium okay so if, if the temperature at any point within the system is same it is said to be in thermal equilibrium simple if you, if you measure the temperature at any point and if it's if it's coming same you can say that the body it is in thermal equilibrium okay now now let us go to the next point it is what is called as chemical equilibrium okay chemical equilibrium okay so see if the chemical composition at any point within the system is same it is said to be in a chemical equilibrium okay so if, if you just check the chemical uh, composition at any point within the system okay and it is coming same it is it is said to be chemical equilibrium in simple there should not be any chemical reaction within the system Okay, because what happens if, if there is any chemical reaction, okay, the chemical composition will change. Okay, and that should not be. So if you measure the chemical composition at any point within the system, if it is coming same, then you can say that the system it is in chemical equilibrium. Okay. So see in, in brief, if you want, okay, so if any body it is in mechanical, thermal, and chemical equilibrium with another body, then it is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium with another body. So is that okay? Yes. Is that okay, all of you? Yes. Is that okay? Yes, is that sir. okay, all of you? Okay. So, so sir, chemical okay, equilibrium, no? yeah, I, I'll just go to that. See, what is chemical equilibrium? Na? Simple. If you, if you measure the chemical composition at any point, okay, what is chemical composition? Okay, like CO2, NO2, okay, SO2. So at any point, if you measure the chemical composition, okay, and if it is coming same, then you can say that the system is in chemical equilibrium. And see, when, when it is possible, when you will get the chemical composition, at any point is same when it is possible when there is no any chemical reaction okay so if there is no any chemical reaction you will get the chemical composition at any point same in that case you can say that the system is in chemical equilibrium is that okay now or still, still there is any doubt so okay sir yeah okay now now let us move to the next point okay now see uh, now now Okay, see, this is very, very simple process. Okay, what is called as quasi-static process? Try to understand. See, on the di see on the paper, you will only see the diagrams. Okay, you will not see the explanation. Okay, so you properly pay the attention what I'm explaining. Okay, what is called as quasi? Okay, quasi indicates a very slow. Okay, and st static, okay, it's somewhat stationary. Okay, quasi very slow. Static, it is somewhat stationary process. Okay, so see, how to how to understand this process in in a very uh, better better manner okay so what i done we have this piston and cylinder arrangement okay you can see uh, we have cylinder uh, okay and in the cylinder we have uh, gas filled inside you can see this is a gas which is filled inside a cylinder okay and at the top we have this piston okay this is a piston okay and now on this piston okay what we are basically doing is we are we are putting a weight of 50 kg Okay, single weight of 50 kg we are putting. Okay, now see, we are putting the weight of 50 kg. And now what we are doing is we are simply removing this weight of 50 kg suddenly. See, initially what I asked you, you put the weight of 50 kg. Now I'm asking you to remove the weight of 50 kg suddenly. Okay, then in that case, can, can you tell me what will happen? What is the possi possibility there? What will happen? What will happen? Will expand. The piston move upward. 
Crystal will move upward, right? Exactly, right. Very correct. See, what will happen when you remove this 50 kg weight suddenly? What will happen? The piston will move very fastly and it will strike the top dead center, right? Okay, whatever the top end is there, it is going to strike it, right? And see, whenever such process occurs, okay, then the path which, which the system follows while moving from initial state to final state. Okay, it is a it is it, it is a combination of non-equilibrium states. Yeah. So what will happen? See, the piston will move from initial state to final state. Okay, by following the non-equilibrium processes. Because okay, because wh what happens? You remove it suddenly. Okay, so when you remove suddenly, the piston will move very fastly. Okay, and it will it will strike. Okay. Now, now try to understand what is quasi static. Now try to understand what what is quasi static. Okay, now see, instead of this, instead of having a single weight of 50 kg, instead of having single weight of 50 kg, okay, what we'll do, that single weight of 50 kg, we will replace by, okay, five strips, five strips of 10 kg each. What we'll do is that 50 kg by five weights of 10 kg, five weights of 10 kg. Simple, simple example I'm giving. Okay, so these are the five, five strips of uh, 10 kg we have. Okay, now what we'll do, we will start removing a single strip at a time. That means at a time we are removing 10 kg. Okay, so initially when we remove 10 kg, what will happen? The piston will move slowly. Okay, system will move slowly. Okay, again we will remove 10 kg. Again, system will move very slowly. Again, we will move it. Okay, so likewise, we will move and finally, Okay, at the end, okay, there will not be any weight. What is removed? Oh, sorry, what is what is remain on the uh, piston? Okay, so at the end, there will not be any weight. So, so can you tell me what difference you observed uh, between suddenly removing the fifty kg pay fifty kg weight and by replacing it with the smaller weights? Okay, so what, what difference you observed here? Okay, can anybody let me know what difference you observed? Yes. What difference you observed here? In this Sorry, first, speed, uh, speed. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, you can answer, please. In this uh, direct for in the for 50 kg the single block, the answer which we get directly fastly. But in yeah. second process, the answer which we get it is very slow, one by one. Yeah. Now see, uh, it is nowhere related to the answer. Okay, what you answered now, it is see uh, like 70 80 percent you are correctly answered it correctly. Okay, but answer will not vary. Let, let me clear you. The reason is see, when you remove 50 kg suddenly, now what happens that you are not giving the time to the system so that it can adjust internally. Okay, you are not giving the time for the system so that the system can adjust internally. Because what happens when you remove it suddenly, okay, the properties are going to change drastically, okay, or they, they just uh, change it very fastly, okay. But instead of that, if you, if you replace this 50 kg weight by, by smaller weights, and if you start removing a single weight at a time, what will happen is, okay, you are giving the time for the system so that it can adjust internally, so that it can adjust internally. Okay, so properties are not going to change fastly. See, when you remove 10 kg initially, okay, system will try to adjust itself. Again, when you remove 10 kg, again, system will try to adjust itself. Okay, so that is what uh, the, the quasi-static process is. Okay, so if, if, if you want me to define the quasi-static process, the definition is when the process proceeds in a such a manner that the system remains infinite seemingly close to equilibrium position. The system remains infinite net seemingly close to an equilibrium position. Then such process it is called as quasi-static process. Okay. So in quasi-static process, there will not be any traces. Okay. Either in a system or in the surround. Okay. So that is what the quasi-static process is. Now see, I'm, I'm repeating it. See, quasi static process, it's a very slow process. It's a very slow process. And it's difficult to achieve such process. Okay. 
So I repeat, the quasi static process, it's very slow process. It's difficult to achieve the process. You can call this process as an ideal process. Okay, you can call this as an ideal process. Now question will be, if it's ideal, if it's ideal, then why we are learning it? See, I, I'm telling you, it is difficult to achieve the ideal process, but we can move close to ideal process. Okay, and if you are able to move close to ideal process, okay, there are more chances to get more efficiency, right? So see, if you operate, operate any power producing device, I repeat, if, if you operate any power producing device like uh, turbine, right, uh, IC engine, okay, if, if you operate such devices on the quasi static process, they will produce a maximum power. See, what, what do we want? We want a power production to be maximum, power consumption should be minimum. And when it is possible, when you operate it on a quasi static process. So when you operate any power producing device like turbine, IC engine on the quasi static process, they will produce some more power. Okay, but when you operate the power consuming devices like compressor, pump, okay, these are the power consuming devices. So when you operate these devices on a quasi static process, they will consume less power. Okay, so that, that only we want. We want power producing devices to produce more power, power consuming devices to produce less, sorry, to consume less power. Okay, and this is only possible when you operate it on a quasi static process. So is that okay? Yes. Is that okay with this one? Yeah. Is that okay, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, sir. Okay. So, yeah, okay, sir, sir, ideal kya hai, sir? The load hum kam kar rahe to thoda thoda upar jaya. To iske andar ideal process kya hua? See, yeah. <clears throat> See. Uh, let, let, let us take the example of uh, let us take the example of uh, IC engine. Okay, let us take the example of IC engine. Okay, you can see the movement of the piston. Okay, movement of the piston. Right? You can see the movement of the piston. Okay, you can see the piston will move very fastly, right? Piston always you used to move very fast, right? Okay, but see, if, if the piston moves very slowly, what happens? What happens when the piston will move, will move very slowly? What happens? There will be the less friction between piston and the cylinder. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so if there is less friction, that means what? Less power will be wasted. Because see, yes, let's see, whenever there is a movement of the piston, that, that movement of the piston should be utilized. Okay, but what happens? Some, some part of the movement of the piston get, get consumed, get consumed in overcoming the friction between piston and cylinder. Some power gets consumed, okay, due to friction between a piston and cylinder. Okay, but when you, when you move very slowly, what happens? Okay, there will be less friction and that power we can utilize. But that is not possible again. Nah? You can't move very uh, piston very slowly. Is that okay? Yes, so that sir. is the reason why I'm calling these are the ideal process. See, if you're able to achieve it, obviously they will be beneficial. Okay. But but they are difficult to achieve. That is the reason why, okay. These are called as close to ideal process. Okay. We can we can just go close to them. Okay. We are not able to achieve them. Right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now I'll just move to the next point. Okay. Uh, what is called as thermodynamic work? Okay. Try to understand what is called as a thermodynamic work. Now try to understand. See this, this I already briefed you. Okay. See, <clears throat> I, I will just give you some simple example. See, work will be always produced during expansion. Whenever there is expansion, work will be produced. Simple, simple. What is expansion? Let's say you have you have a steam, you have a steam, and if you allow that steam to flow on the blades of the turbine, when you allow the steam to flow on the blades of the turbine, what happens? Blades of the turbine will start rotating. Blades of the turbine will start rotating, right? That means what? When the blade will start rotating, okay. Obviously, the blades are mounted on a shaft, so shaft will also start rotating, okay. And you know that it is it it rotated inside a North and South Pole, okay, we, uh, that means it's further coupled to generator. So this is how the power will be produced, right? 
So this is what happens in the expansion. So see, work will be always produced. Whenever there is an expansion, work get produced. And how to understand its expansion? Obviously, the pressure has to decrease and volume has to increase. Okay. So when we move from point number one to point number two, what is happening is pressure get decreased from one to two, but volume get increased from V1 to V2. See, pressure will decrease from point number one to point number two. Okay. That is pressure is, is decreased from P1 to P2. Volume gets increased from V1 to V2. Right. When such is the process, it is called as expansion. And during expansion, work get produced. Work get produced. Okay. Now see, during expansion, work get produced. Okay. Now see, now, now I'll just show you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'll just annotate something here. Okay. As you can see here. Yeah. Let us see. See, as I told you, see work. There is, there is a concept of called as work transfer. The, the concept is called as work transfer. And what is work transfer? Work transfer indicates that work transfer indicates that work is produced work is produced okay or work is consumed work is consumed okay so there are two possibilities okay what do you understand by work work transfer work transfer is nothing but work transfer is nothing but either work produced or work consumed okay is that okay either work produced or work consumed is that okay so i'll just write down That's again sure. See, work transfer, work transfer indicates that work is produced or work is consumed. Now see, if I say that work transfer is 30 kilojoule, okay, work transfer is 30 kilojoule. What do you understand? Work transfer is 30 kilojoule. What do you understand? So if work transfer is 30 kilojoule, you need to understand that work is produced. Okay, you need to understand that. Okay, just a minute. Okay, you need to understand that work is produced. Okay, work is produced. Because see, when you see the sign, okay, when you see the sign, okay, it is positive. You can see for 30 kilojoule, okay, what is the sign? It's positive, right? For 30 kilojoule, see, work transfer is 30 kilojoule. So it indicates that the work is produced. Is that okay? I'll just, I'll just write down work produces 30 kilojoule. Is that okay? Let me know. Let me know. See, when I say that work transfer is 30 kilojoule, it indicates that work produces 30 kilojoule, right? But if I say it like this, see, okay, if I say it like this, okay, I say that work transfer is minus 30 kilojoule. Work transfer is minus 30 kilojoule. Okay, so you need to understand that work is consumed. Okay, work is consumed. Are, are, are you able to understand the difference? Yes, sir. See, when I say simple, when I say simple, work transfer is 30 kilojoule, work transfer, then you, you should uh, recall that concept. What is work transfer? Either it's a work produced or either it is work consumed. Okay, work transfer is work produced or work consumed. So when you see the sign here, first case, it is plus. That means it's a produced. Okay. But when you see the sign here, it's a minus. That's why it's consumed. Work is consumed. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. See now here, but what, what mistake you commonly used to do is, okay. You, you, you mentioned that, you mentioned that, Work consumed is minus 30. It is not required. This minus sign is not required. See, I am repeating. Is that okay or not? See, I will just write on one more statement here. What, what you used, what common mistake you used to do is okay, when you say that work work, see, you used to write down that work consumed, work consumed is minus 30 kilojoule. It is not required. This is a wrong statement. See, this is a wrong. Because see, you already mentioned here, it's consumed. It is consumed. So it is already understand that this is minus 30 kilojoule. No need to write down minus 30 here. See, when you write down minus 30, when you mention that, it is work transfer. Work transfer, it's a broad term. It, it's, a, it's a produce or consume. Okay. So in work transfer, okay, from the sign, 
you can't mention like work consume is minus 30 kilo joule not required this is the wrong statement because this consumed work consumed word it always indicates that it's a minus okay so this is a wrong statement work consume is minus 30 kilo joule it's wrong you can write down work consume is 30 kilo joule because consume work word always always indicates that it's it's minus is that okay is that okay all of you yes sir okay now 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 let us let us come to the come to the concept of heat okay let let us come to the concept of heat now see what is how to understand heat okay now you can see on a pv diagram you have plotted a process on a pv diagram you have plotted a process okay so see if i plot the same process okay on a ts diagram see this is a t t diagram okay this is s diagram okay so if you plot it on a pv it will give you work okay so area below this process see you can see this area this area or this area okay so this area will give you the work done why it will give you work done you have, because you have plotted on a pv you have plotted on a pv so this is in first case this is a work of expansion in second case this is a work of compression okay now what i'm asking is you plot you, you know plot the process on a ts diagram you plot this process on a ts diagram so let me plot the same process on a ts diagram okay so this is the initial point 1 I, i'll just take this point 1 okay this is a point number 2 okay and this is a process okay i will move from point number 1 to point number 2 right now see if when you see the area below this okay when you see the area below this okay area below the 1 2 2 okay just see the area below this is the area which is coming below 1 2 so area below the 1 2 2 will give you the value of heat transfer during 1 2 i repeat it will give you the value of heat transfer during 1 2 because you have plotted on a ts you have plotted on a ts i i i'll just show you the formula see w is given by w during 1 2 2 work done during process 1 2 2 is given by integration okay this is the integration pdv integration pdv for the process 1 2 2 integration pdv for the process 1 2 2 similarly similarly okay heat transfer during process 1 2 2 heat transfer during process 1 2 2 is given by integration tds i repeat integration tds for process 1 2 2 for process 1 2 2 you can see two formulas you can compare so when you plot it on a pv it will give you work done when you plot it on a ts it will give you heat transfer okay this is work transfer on a pv and on ts it will give you heat transfer right so see is that, is that okay with the diagram have you understood the comparison Have you understood a comparison? Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, explain again, please. See, when you plot any process on a PV diagram, pressure and volume diagram, okay, area below that process will give you the value of work done. Work done. Because you are plotting on a PV. Similarly, if you are plotting on a TS, that is temperature entropy, area below that process will give you the value of heat transfer for for pv it will give you work transfer for ts it will give you heat transfer okay that is the case right now see now see again as like work done as like work done see work can be produced work can be consumed whenever work is produced it is positive whenever work is consumed it is negative similar case is going to happen with the heat with the heat right so see whenever heat is received okay so whenever heat is received it is positive try to understand whenever heat is been received by the system it is to be taken as positive whenever heat is lost by the system it is taken as negative is that okay is that okay 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 see i will just write down see see heat transfer okay so see what do you understand from heat transfer meaning of heat transfer is either heat is lost 
okay heat is lost okay or heat is received okay or heat is received okay Re received or extracted abstracted okay it is one and same okay so see heat transfer indicates that heat is lost okay or or heat is received or heat is received okay now now let us let us work on the uh, the cases as like work see when i say that when i say that heat transfer okay heat transfer is 30 kilo joule okay heat transfer is 30 kilo joule okay and let me know what you understand from this heat transfer is 30 kilo joule what do you understand what do you understand from this sign is positive that means what Okay. It is received. Received, right? So I will write. I, I will write down here. Heat received. Okay. Heat received. Is heat received is thirty kilojoule. Heat received is thirty. Is that okay? Heat received is thirty kilojoule. Is that okay? Sir, to sir, all of sir, sir. If yeah. it is received, so in TS diagram, the temperature goes high. No, 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 no. See, I'm, I'm just, I just told you the. Again, see, I'm telling you, so you just remember the formula because in order to understand uh, from where the formula has been came. See, you know integration PDV from where it is came. We are derived that, but you yes, don't sir. know integration TDS. Have I, have I explained you the derivation for that? I haven't, because that derivation we have in the second chapter. I don't understand. I'm just comparing it. See, if you compare now, then only you understand. See, the purpose to tell you that when you plot on a PV, it will give you work. When you plot on a TS, it will give you heat. Okay. Why? Why? By plotting on a PV, it is giving work done. For that, we have seen the derivation. Why? By plotting on a TS, it is giving heat transfer. That, that we yet, yet not see, right? So just now you understand. Okay, okay, sure. Okay. Okay. See, because if I start explaining the derivation now, na, okay, then th this point will remain here only. Okay. Now see, heat transfer is 30 kilojoule. That means heat received is 30 kilojoule, right? In the similar manner, if I say that, if I say that, okay, heat transfer is minus 30 kilojoule, heat transfer is minus 30 kilojoule, then heat lost. Okay, you might see that heat lost is 30 kilojoule. Because see, minus minus sign, it, it should indicate that it's a loss. It's a loss. Okay. Now I'm saying I'm saying, see, you, you should never say that. Okay. You should never say that. Okay. Heat lost is minus 30. Okay. It's a wrong statement. It's a wrong statement. Because see, you already already written huh? it is lost. So it is understood that this term is minus. So no need to write on minus again in front of that. So this is wrong. This is a wrong state. Heat lost is minus 30 kilojoule. It's wrong. If, if you're mentioning that heat lost, then he, you should mention that heat loss is 30. See, all, all of you see, heat lost is minus 30. It indicates that heat lost is 30. That's all. Okay, no need to write down again minus. Heat loss is minus 30 kilojoule. It's a wrong state. Is that clear? <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, see, I think, okay, with this, okay, uh, we'll, be, we'll conclude the today's session, okay? And in the next lecture, okay, we'll initially uh, take some, okay, reversible cycle, irreversible cycle, and zeroth law of thermodynamics. Okay, so these are the only some descriptive part we will take in the next lecture. Immediately after that, we will be starting with the derivations, okay? We, we will manually derive those derivations. For, for five processes, okay? First is constant pressure, constant volume, constant temperature, constant entropy, and polytropic process, okay? So for all these five processes, okay, we will, we will, we will establish a relationship between pressure, volume, temperature. We will see the, the diagram. We will calculate heat transfer. We will calculate work transfer. We will calculate change in enthalpy. We will calculate change in entropy, okay? So all these things we need to do it for these five processes, okay? Constant pressure, it's called as isobaric. Constant volume, it's called as constant uh, isoporic. 
okay constant temperature it is called as constant uh, isothermal constant entropy it's called as isentropic and one more it is there it is called as polydropic so for all these five processes we need to see the derivations okay so that we will see in the next lecture so for today's lecture we will stop if if, if you have any doubt or difficulty you can just let me know okay otherwise otherwise we can continue